Hello, welcome. I'm Liam, I'm a software engineer here at CloudCannon. As a Git-based CMS, our main bread and butter is editing static websites. But we're also interested in the broader experience of developing and maintaining static sites. And one of the areas I spend a lot of time on is our open source tooling ecosystem. Today, I'm here to launch PageFind, our new open source library for searching static websites. The first thing I want to address is why we felt that the world needed another search tool. For some background, like many companies, we're constantly building out our own websites, but additionally, we have a services wing that's building out websites for our enterprise clients. This puts us in a position where we're shipping a lot of websites internally and externally, so we're always on the hunt for the best tools to deliver those websites. One of those tools that we gravitate towards a lot is Hugo, which is why we're all here today. Another tool that we'll often want to deliver a website with is some sort of search integration. And that's a category that, until now, we haven't really found a tool that fits our needs. So if we look at the existing search landscape, it broadly covers two camps. On the back end, we have traditional hosted tools or third-party platforms that run the search on a server and return the results. And on the front end, we have this new wave of JavaScript libraries that load or generate a search index entirely in your browser. One of the core values of using Git-based content management is the fact that you aren't vendor locked into a platform. You own your content and that content lives in Git. So I try to avoid shipping websites that lock in other third-party vendors. And that ideally means that we avoid relying on a third-party search platform. There are also a lot of pragmatic reasons to reach for an open source tool. They're cheaper, because you're just paying for the infrastructure that hosts them. They're generally more configurable if you find unforeseen needs down the road. And they're portable. It can live in your own infrastructure, wherever that infrastructure is. So we do still have the option of self-hosting a search server, but now we're building out infrastructure and we're missing out on a lot of the core benefits that we wanted when we chose static sites to begin with. So going down the path of static front-end search feels like the right direction for us. We have no extra servers to maintain, there's less surface area for downtime, and no extra costs beyond our bandwidth. Our entire site remains static in all of its aspects. So, we're sold on the benefits of front-end search, but this is where the trade-off comes in and we often hit scaling issues. Some of these libraries generate a search index in the browser, and that can be quite slow. However, most of them will let you build a pre-built index on the server ahead of time. This is great for search speed, but these indexes can grow quite unwieldy and exceed what I'm comfortable serving over the network if it isn't strictly necessary. Once you pass thousands or tens of thousands of pages, some of these indexes can run into the multi-megabytes, and that's often without full text retrieval or smarter search weighting. First, there's the cost implication of serving that bandwidth for every search request, and more importantly, there's the impact that searching can now have for someone on a low bandwidth or metered device. It's not a great experience to ship. Also, in this camp, I have a small personal gripe which is that I've always found the process of building a search index to be a mental overhead. I've already templated my content out into a website, and the thought of templating it out once again into a search index feels like a bit of a chore. So these are the main limitations that we're trying to solve with PageFind. To set the scene, in my view, most browser search libraries work well at this end of the scale, tens, hundreds of pages and hosting infrastructure for search really makes sense at this other end, hundreds of thousands to millions of pages. Our goal with PageFind is to blur these boundaries for a large swath of static site use cases. I don't want to worry about what will happen if and when my site grows to thousands or tens of thousands of pages, and I don't want my solution to that concern to be prematurely baking hosted search infrastructure into every site that I ship. PageFind falls into the front-end search camp. All searching is performed in the viewer's browser with no infrastructure or third-party service. The way we've structured PageFind, however, brings us a lot of the benefits typically restricted to the hosted search experience, namely low bandwidth search requests delivered to the user. 
we have also built in some great features that we often need and want. PageFind can handle tagging content and filtering alongside search, as well as contextual searches and even quoting exact phrases out of the box. I'll dive into how this is achieved a little later, but first I'll show you the process of setting up PageFind on a static site. PageFind works with any static site generator, or indeed any static directory of HTML files. This is because it runs as a separate build step after Hugo, ingesting your built website and outputting a static search bundle. It falls into a methodology we've been dubbing SSG chaining, subsequent SSGs that themselves take a static site as their input. To demonstrate this to you today, I have a Hugo website filled with content from an obscure comic creator, Randall Monroe, or XKCD. All of his content is Creative Commons by attribution, so huge shout out to him for making demos like this possible. And we have a good amount of content here, about two and a half thousand comics, each with a full transcription and some metadata. So first, we'll just run a bare Hugo build to get our static site on disk, which we now have in the public directory. We can now run PageFind. The CLI itself is written in Rust and distributed as a single binary, much like Hugo's distribution model, but the easiest way to install it is through the wrapper that we publish on npm. So let's run npx pagefind and pass it our built Hugo site as input. And we're done. We can see that we index 2,500 pages and about 22,000 words, and we're left with our static site as it was. We can list out our public directory and see that PageFind has added an underscore PageFind folder. Let's host the static directory with a generic web server. I'll just use the built-in Python one and pull it up in a browser and see what we've got access to now. Visually, nothing has changed. We haven't added any search input to our site yet, but we do now have access to the PageFind search API. Jumping into the console, I can initialize PageFind with an asynchronous import, and that gives us access to our JavaScript API. Using this, I can await pagefind.search cloud, for example, and we can see that there are 81 results. So we know how many results we've got, but we haven't yet loaded any data for our results. To see that in action, let's await the data function of our first result, and we'll see that we get a bunch of information back. We've got the URL of this page, the content of this page rendered to plain text, and an excerpt that has the search terms pre-highlighted. These functions are the building blocks for searching with PageFind, and this API is great for building your own search UI or integrating search into your existing code base. In this case, we just want to add a search input to our site in as few steps as possible, and PageFind has us covered there. We'll grab the PageFind UI snippet from the docs and jump into our code base. Here, Let's add search below our title on the home page. We're adding a style sheet and a script tag, and then an element that we initialize as the search UI. Now we can rebuild our Hugo site and rerun PageFind. This time we'll save ourselves a command by passing the serve flag to PageFind, which will automatically spin up a web server for your site once it's complete. Loading our site once again, we can see the PageFind UI in action. We have search results, excerpts, and even images pulled through with zero config. Now, it's one thing running this locally where everything is instant, so to show it off better, I'll quickly deploy our site to production. We're gonna add a hook to run PageFind after our build and deploy our site on Cloudkinen so we can see how it performs in the real world. Now that we're viewing it over the internet, we can try search things and see how fast it is. The search returns pretty quick for a 2,500 page site, but more importantly, the search is running really lean. Let's reload and filter our network to page finds requests and run this again. First, when the input is focused, we initialize page find, which pulls 64 kilobytes in this case. We've got a JavaScript file, some WebAssembly, and a small metadata index. Now, if we input a search, you'll see we load another small index followed by some result fragments. And in total, we just searched all two and a half thousand comics coming in at 115 kilobytes to the user. This seems like a pretty good point to run you through how PageFind works under the hood. 
At a high level, PageFind searches in a similar manner to other front-end search libraries. First, the CLI builds a search index, and then the front-end loads that search index and searches within it. What you're seeing is an overview of a directory PageFind might create in your site. We've seen some of these files before, I've omitted the UI files to clean things up, and where PageFind bridges the gap between speed and scale is with its index chunking. So the search index is split up into contiguous chunks that correspond to alphabetical ranges of the search space, and that means that the data for searching words that start with G can be loaded independently of the words that start with S, for example. PageFind's target for these chunks is around 30 kilobytes, and how many of them you load depends on how many words there are in your search. Each page is associated with a short hash of its contents, and these hashes are output into PageFind's directory as fragments. These contain the full content of each page, as well as any extra metadata like image URLs or titles. Lastly, we need a way for PageFind's frontend to actually find all of these files. This is that small metadata index we saw earlier, which primarily stores the list of page hashes and the word boundaries for each of our index chunks. All of that comes together into the page find directory that gets injected into your static site. With that knowledge under our belt, let's walk through a page find request. When we initialize page find, we need to load the libraries and we need to load the metadata. The metadata is usually between 10 up to 100 kilobytes, depending on how big the site is. Then, once a user makes a request, we load the index for that word, that's about 30 kilobytes, and then finally to show the result, we just need to load that results fragment. Now that we have a good grasp of what PageFind is doing under the hood, let's run through a few of the other features that we've built so far. We can start with filtering. An oft-requested feature from clients and designers alike is the ability to filter a search down to certain types of content, tags, categories, you name it. In this case, we really want to be able to filter our search results down to a specific character. Looking at the page for an individual comic, we have this data on hand. All we need to do is go into our template here and add data page find filter character inside our loop. Now I'll rerun Hugo and rerun PageFind, and upon reloading our page, we see we've got a filter panel automatically. Next, while we can search for the transcription, we aren't currently getting any results for the eponymous title text. This isn't too surprising. It isn't rendered on the page directly, so it doesn't get picked up automatically. Back in our template again, we can add data page find index attributes to our image element here, which will add the title attribute to the search index. While we're here, I'd also like to present some extra information to the user about each search result. Let's define some metadata by adding data page find meta to our date label. Rerunning our builds, we can now search for the title text of any comic, and we can also see the date metadata is being shown alongside each search result. There's one last change that I'd like to make here. If we search for one of the comic titles, we might see it appear twice right now. This is because our home page is being picked up and added to the index as well. There are a few ways we can control what PageFind does and does not index. The best way to tackle this is to add a data PageFind body element somewhere in our template. We'll jump in and add this only to our comic layout. If PageFind finds this attribute somewhere on your site, it will ignore any pages that don't have a specific body tagged, aka our homepage. Back at our search, we can see that the home page is no longer listed. I think with that, we're all configured for the search experience we want on this site. So far, I've mostly been searching single words, but let's take a moment to look at the results page is returning. If I search multiple words, USB and connector, we'll only see pages that contain both words are returned. PageFind will also search ahead as you type. So if I start typing therm, we'll get results for both thermometer and thermal. These results are then ranked on a combination of how close the word is to your search word and the term frequency of the word in that page. An excerpt is then returned with highlighting inserted that covers the densest region of matching words on the page. This is where PageFind's chunking strategy really shines. By splitting our search space into independent groups, we can load a lot more data for any given search. 
Where many front-end libraries can only search for presence or counts of words on pages, we can pull in word locations as well, which lets us search for exact phrases in quotes across our entire website. I'd like to end this talk by showing a few quick examples that I've put together in the process of testing PageFind at scale. Recently, there was a great article about Cloudflare moving their documentation to Hugo. As a 2,000-page real-world documentation site built with Hugo, it's the perfect candidate for testing PageFind. Running PageFind, we can see that it indexes the entire site in under 10 seconds, and loading that over the internet, we can see that it has no issues here. We can pull up a result for dashboard in 130 kilobytes total for our libraries, indexes, and results. I highlighted in the description for this talk some impressive numbers for searching MDN, so let's load up a hosted example of this and see how it performs over the internet. It performs much the same as our other searches. This isn't too surprising. If we think back to our infrastructure diagram, a given search term will usually only load a single index chunk, which aims to be a consistent size. The only index that grows with your site is the metadata index that we encountered earlier. And even on MDN's 13,000 or so indexed pages, that index grows to a perfectly reasonable 90 kilobytes, which is smaller than some search libraries' JavaScript payload alone. We can even perform a full-text exact search over MDN in real time in the browser without a hiccup. I hope that this talk's given you a solid understanding of how PageFind works and the use cases that PageFind unlocks a fully static search for. I'll note again that PageFind not only works with Hugo, but 11T, Jekyll, uh, and any JavaScript-based SSG that has a static output. If you can get your hands on a directory of HTML files, you can index it with PageFind. And PageFind is just one of our tools in this ecosystem. I mentioned earlier that we categorize it as SSG chaining, and we have some other links in that chain. We built Rosie, which lets you translate any static site as a post-processing step, Reseed allows you to build a site without worrying about base URLs and mount it on a subdirectory later on. And Page Break helps you implement pagination with a lot more freedom, where it might be tricky to do so from the template. All of these tools are open source on our GitHub, and they all work well with each other and any static site generator. If you want to get started with PageFind, all documentation can be found on pagefind.app and feel free to open any issues or discussions on the repository at cloudcanon slash pagefind on GitHub. Ultimately, I look forward to seeing more searchable sites out there with fewer headaches for developers and more benefits to the end users. Cheers. Mm -hmm.